Hi guys, Happy Conscious Gal here. I know I very rarely film vlogs at night because the picture's not very good, but I just had to get in front of my computer and tell you guys this now because I'm so just like bursting with excitement at it and it's just a totally amazing turn of events in my HCG diet journey. Basically my news is this, I'm I guess officially in phase five, which is my made up name for after the HCG diet has finished. Um, I started P4 about 40 days ago, so that's more than five weeks. So I feel like, you know, basically that's done and I'm in phase five. But the most amazing news, and the reason I'm making this video is through a totally bizarre turn of events, I have found myself suddenly eating carbs and lots of carbs. And the punchline is I haven't gained any weight and it's totally taking me by surprise. So that's the bullet points for those of you who want to hear the end of the story first, because sometimes I can talk a lot and rabbit on and people want to hear the point. So that's the point. I'm eating carbs. I haven't gained weight. It's miraculous. My weight is still stable. I'm basically where I've been for the last couple of months. So it's amazing. But the story of how this happened totally bizarrely and unexpectedly without me planning it uh, starts when I live my last vlog, which was about three weeks into phase four, and I'm pretty sure at that time I said to you guys that I'm really not eating much carbs, and I don't think I ever will, and at that point I was eating very much a strict low-carb P3 diet, and I had added in a few slightly starchy things like quinoa, tempeh, uh, a few more vegetables, but I was basically eating P3 foods, and I felt that if I added in nuts or cheese, my weight would gain. If I added in any carbs, it didn't seem to work either. I seemed to gain weight. So I'd kind of come to the conclusion that I needed to eat a very plain P3 diet, you know, for the indefinite future. And I was assuming at some point I might want to introduce carbs, but I had no plan to do that. And I'm quite happy eating P3 foods. I like low carb. I like eating fish. I like eating eggs. I like eating dairy, especially fermented cultured foods. And I had no plans to introduce any kind of carbs. So I'll just tell you how my weight was during that whole P4 experiment of staying basically low carb. I still have my big thing here, <laughs> except I don't measure myself. It's just each day I do my weight so I can sort of keep track of it. I put, you know, the day, the day of the week, the amount I weigh, and any interesting thing that I may have eaten the day before, so that when I look back at it, I can see if I didn't get enough sleep, or if I ate some weird thing and made my weight change. So that's all I track now. I'm, I'm probably going to stop doing this soon, because I'm feeling pretty comfortable, but I wanted to do it while I was in P4. Anyway, so in phase three, my weight pretty much stayed between my LIW, which was... Um, around 59 kilograms up to about 60.5 so it stayed within a few pounds of my LIW I was very happy with that and by P4 I'd crept up a little bit a couple of pounds higher so I tended to stay in P4 between 60 kilograms and I think I once got up to 62 or slightly above that and I did a correction day and it went back down. So I pretty much stayed between 60 and 62 through the whole thing. There were a couple of weeks where I was 61 to 62, there were a couple of weeks where I was 60 to 61, but I was pretty much within that four pound range for the whole of P4. Um, and I'm still there now, so I'm very, very happy. Um, as of today, I'm 60.7 kilograms, and the thing that's amazing about that is I have been eating massive amounts of carbs in the last week, and in fact, my weight's gone down. Totally bizarre! So this is how it happened, the totally unexpected introduction of carbohydrates into my diet, unplanned. Basically, um, about, what's today? Today's Friday, so last Tuesday, so about 10 days ago, my sister and her partner came to stay with us here in our new house, and I don't know why, I must have stirred up some emotional stuff having her here. Um, she's someone I had a very strained relationship with when I was a child and we've done many, many years of work and we now get along really, really well. But I think there was a little bit of fear in me about her coming, that maybe we'd have arguments and it might cause some problems between me and my partner and her and her partner. I think I was a little bit nervous. And as a result of that, I got sick. 
and um, my stomach got very, very upset. And so I had really bad stomach cramps and it sort of turned into a full-blown stomach flu. <laughs> I ended up basically in bed for about most of the week that she was here. We still had a lovely time and it was all fine, but in terms of the impact on my eating, um, for about the first three days of it, I had really severe stomach flu symptoms. So diarrhea, vomiting, severe stomach cramps. As the week progressed, that shifted more to a sore throat, stuffy head, runny nose, which is sort of what I've got a little bit of now. You might hear my voice is a little bit croaky, but I'm pretty much at the end of the flu now. So what happened was the food I've been eating for many, many months, which is very high protein, high fat, and very low carb, I couldn't eat. Because when you have stomach flu, you just can't eat cream, you can't eat anything rich, you can't eat you know, fat, fat. And the first couple of days I couldn't eat anything at all, obviously, because I was too sick. But when I got to the point where I was well enough to start to eat, the only food I could get down was very plain things like plain crackers, plain spelt crackers, or very plain bread with a scrape of honey on it, or, you know, boiled rice with a little bit of um, honey on it, like rice pudding kind of thing. So, you know, very plain carbohydrates. So you eat, if you have a stomach upset, which, which I always eat, which settles my stomach. Obviously, I haven't eaten those foods for over a year since the last time I got sick, which was about exactly a year ago when I went camping. Some of you guys saw those vlogs and I went camping and I got a bit, a bit sick and I had the same thing happen. I could only eat carbs and I was in the middle of P2 then, so that was pretty interesting, but that only lasted for a couple of days. This time I was sick for a lot longer. So as I started reintroducing foods and I had this stomach upset, all I could eat was carbs. So it was really weird because I'd had a year, you know, a year of no carbs, particularly the last few months, really, really, really strict P2 and then a very strict P3 and then a pretty low carb P4 and, you know, no fruit, very little other than basic low carb vegetables, no grains, no starch, just nothing. So here I was eating plain pieces of toast with a scrape of honey, plain crackers, plain biscuits, plain rice pudding. And then my sister's a wonderful cook, so she was making a lot of soup, pumpkin soup, so that's more carbs. And I'd have a piece of toast with it. And as I started to get better, I could eat more. I still really wanted this grounding, warm food because the weather's gotten quite cold here. We're going into autumn, or well, you Americans call it fall. We're going into autumn. It's getting cold here at night. We don't really have much heating here, so we have to create a wood stove fire. And um, I've been just really noticing the mornings are cold, and I've been waking up going, ooh, I think I might stick with this rice pudding thing because it's so warming, you know, whereas for many, many months my breakfast was really low-carb Greek yogurt, high-fat Greek yogurt with some hemp seeds in it and some chia seeds in it and maybe some coconut butter in it, all mixed in together, very high-fat, very high-protein with some protein powder. And I've been having that for months, but that comes out of the refrigerator, it's cold. So when you're fighting off a flu, you want hot food, so it's like, mm, what kind of yogurt, can't heat that up. So I just started having things like a little bit of muesli or oats, putting some hot water on it and making it into a hot porridge or making some rice pudding. I've been doing that all week and I keep kind of getting on the scales and assuming it must go up. I mean, I'm eating carbs. And then I was like, mm, my weight hasn't gone up. In fact, it's gone down a little bit. This is totally weird. So I thought, okay, we'll keep doing it. I'm only eating what my body wants and my body is still wanting grounding, nourishing, warming carbohydrates, you know, um, a little bit of potato or sweet potato or really healthy bread with a bit of honey on it or rice pudding. Um, I'm making a millet, fermented millet porridge. <laughs> it's just like, this is a 180 degree backflip from how I've been eating for months. And I didn't plan it. It's just that my body got sick and it wants this food. And it's totally freaking me out that I haven't put weight on them. If you had asked me a week ago if I'd be eating carbs, I would have said I won't be eating carbs for another year. I just didn't think I would be. I had no interest in them. But, you know, as I've said the whole time, I always listen to my body. And the whole way through this HCG journey, I've really, really listened to my body. And if it wants some weird thing, like a week of carbohydrates, I'm giving it that. And in, in some weird way, I kind of feel like this is a sign to me that my HCG journey is complete because I'm eating a much more normal diet now compared to what everyone around me is eating. Like if I'm at a cafe, I might be able to have something that other people would eat. Instead of always having to go home and prepare my own weird low-carb food, I'm participating in society again. And um, But it's odd because I've been eating the same food for so long that I don't really know what to eat. Like, a, you know, lunch, I'm like normally I'd make my salad, the tuna in it, and 
I'm like, well, I don't really feel like anything cold. What will I make? Hmm, maybe I'll make some pancakes out of coconut flour. That sounds warm. That sounds hearty. That sounds filling. That would be good for my tummy and my throat. But, you know, I almost don't know what to buy. I went shopping today and I was like, I don't know what food to buy. I don't know whether to buy low-carb foods, high-carb foods, low-fat foods, high-fat foods. I just I completely don't know. So all I'm doing is I'm just following what my gut says and what my body feels like. I look at something and go, hmm, that looks nice. I feel like I might want to eat that in the next couple of days. And that's it. And I'm only buying enough food for one or two days because this may change. Next week, I may not want carbs anymore. I may go back to low-carb. So the whole thing has taken me completely by surprise. I wasn't prepared for it. I hadn't planned it. You know, so far for the past year, everything's been planned. The gradual transition from P2 to P3 and then P3 to P4 and then back to P2. It's all been very planned. And this has totally taken me by surprise. So I probably sound very confused. And I talked to my mother on the phone last night and she said to me, look, you know, this is a sign that you finished this weight loss journey. You are back just eating whatever you eat like a normal person. If you feel like a handful of this or a handful of that, you eat it, you're not worrying about it, you don't have any rules. And I thought, she's right. And that's what I dreamed of. I dreamed of getting to the point where I'd be so slim and stable in my weight that I could just eat what I feel like. And that's where I'm at now. But the interesting thing is, if I look at what I've eaten over the past week, yes, there's a lot of carbohydrates, which I always thought would make me gain weight. But interestingly, on the days where I felt the urge to eat carbs, I have not felt the urge to eat fat. It's not like I'm sitting here having full cream and adding it to my yogurt and putting all this extra fat in like I was previously, or eating cheese or nuts and also having carbs. I'm really not. Like my body has just been craving a very simple diet of like rice and vegetables, plain toast with honey, like really simple foods that you eat when you're sick, soup with bread, you know. So it kind of seems to be that for me, if, if I eat carbs but I don't eat too much fat, I seem to be okay at the moment. Uh, a time may come where I could combine fat with carbs and be fine. Who knows? But I think the reason why I'm not gaining weight is I really, really, really am following my hunger. Like I've been noticing because I'm just allowing myself to eat whatever I feel like. And I don't tend to eat very much. So I don't go and have a whole lot of bread. I might just have one thin slice with a little bit of small serving of soup. And then I feel really good for the next few hours and I don't want anything else. Or I might just want a handful of something and eat that. So the other morning I woke up and I made this big pot of rice because I knew I was still feeling sick. I wanted rice pudding. But I only served myself a, couple, a few spoonfuls of it in a very small bowl. And I ate it and I felt good. And then about two hours later I thought, hmm, I'm hungry again. I might have a bit more of that rice. And I made up a little bit more rice pudding and I ate it. And about two hours later I had another little bit more. And I think the reason why my weight is staying so stable and in fact has gone down a bit is because I'm just totally eating to hunger. And I always knew that my goal was to get to the point where my weight would be stable. I would listen to my body. I would eat to hunger. I would only eat when I'm hungry. I would stop eating when I'm not hungry. Today when I made these um, coconut flour pancakes, I made a whole lot of batter, but I actually only cooked up two pancakes and then I was full. And I haven't felt the urge to make any more. It's still in my fridge. I might make some tomorrow. So I'm really feeling so excited at the thought that I can just eat to hunger not overeat, eat small amounts of the rest of my life, eat whatever I feel like that my body is craving because my body's pretty cleansed. It doesn't crave junk. It craves healthy, nutritious food that's prepared in a way where everything's fermented and cultured so that I can get maximum nutrition. I soak everything, I ferment everything, you know, everything's prepared for maximum nutrition, which means I'm free to just listen to the urge of my body and eat what it feels like in a small amount that makes me no longer be hungry. And it's so liberating, especially after a year of HCG where it's rules, 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 rules. I'm no longer on any kind of rule or plan. I'm just eating whatever I feel like to hunger. And it's the reason I'm making this vlog is I'm just so excited because I cannot believe that my weight is still stable after doing this for a whole week. I'm literally 60.7 kilograms. That's where I was at during the whole of P3. That's been my average weight for the last few months. You know, it's only a few pounds higher than my LIW. It's where I stabilize. I've stabilized between 60 and 61. I keep coming back to this around 60.5, 60.6, 60.7. Sometimes I go up, sometimes I go down. I'm stable. And I'm eating carbs. Crazy. I never in a million years would have expected this. I wasn't counting on it. I wasn't looking forward to it. I wasn't intending it. I didn't work towards it. It just totally accidentally happened through getting sick. And it's been such a blessing because I think if I hadn't have got sick, 
I may not have introduced carbohydrates like this for another six months. I might have just kept eating my happy low carb diet, very high fat, high protein diet. I never would have discovered that I could eat carbs safely because I would never have introduced them in the amounts I have been here in a way that cut the fat down up the carbs. I would have probably just added carbs to what I was already eating. Now I see that that would have been way too many calories. I probably would have gained weight. But just having carbs without all the fat seems to be fine. So it's a miraculous miracle. I don't know if any of you out there have gone through this after you finished your final P4. If you found you could introduce carbs in a pretty low fat way and been fine. I don't know if it's just happening now. It may change next week. I may go back to can't eat carbs again, have to go back to low carb, high protein, high fat. Or I may stay like this. Or I may better eat whatever I want. Who knows? I'm just listening to my body day to day, tracking it, monitoring the scales just to check if things going well, and just trusting and being totally open to what I am shown by my body because my body is wiser than my brain. My brain cannot predict. <laughs> All I can do is follow the science. So anyway, I thought you guys would be interested to hear this, especially since the last couple of vlogs I made was all about I'm never going to eat carbs again, it's all going to be low carb. I just am totally taken by surprise by this turn of events. So I'm going to go tonight and make some sort of dinner, probably fairly high protein because I still tend to eat more protein at night. And then in the morning I'm going to make my yummy porridge full of carbs, put some honey in it full of carbs eat it and totally trust that I'll be fine. So, amazing. It's all crazy and totally unexpected. So I seem to have talked for a long time and not said very much, but I'm just so incredibly excited that I had to share it with you. And I tend to only do a vlog about once a month at the moment, so I figure it's okay if I talk for a while. Anyway, guys, I hope you're all going beautifully on your HCG journey. I really want to encourage you to keep listening to your body, listen to your intuition, listen to your gut, listen to your heart. Don't listen to other people. Listen to yourself. Your body always knows best. I am in the final stages of finishing off my second HCG book, so it will be coming soon. I know I say that every time, but I'm always working on it. It is just a big book, but it's going to be finished soon, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, guys, I'll let you know in the next couple of weeks what happens with this whole eating carbs thing, if it continues to work for me or if I have to go back to low carb. I'm um, hoping it will continue to work for me because I'm really enjoying it. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.